Well, here in Berlin, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has hosted NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg for talks. The meeting was in preparation for the alliance's annual summit, which will be held in Washington in July. The pair discussed the war in Ukraine and how to boost defense spending to counter threats from Russia and China. Stoltenberg praised Germany for its commitment to supporting Ukraine. The pair also urged allies to do more to help Kyiv. Camille Grand is an expert in defense and security policy at the European Council on Foreign Relations. Welcome to DW. The NATO chief praised Germany. We just heard it there as the most important European supporter of Ukraine. And he urged other allies to follow Germany's example. Why do you think um, other European countries, especially, are more hesitant? I guess there are two two reasons for that. So some of them simply don't have the capacity because they they, they fail to have uh, have the proper stockpiles, and so therefore they are struggling. Then there is a small group which is more reluctant on the assistance to Ukraine and has been uh, stating from day one that they wouldn't uh, deliver weapons, typically Hungary. So I, the mobilization is there. We have more and more countries um, uh, uh, tipping in their stocks or producing for Ukraine. But it is, uh, but it's true that uh, some lag behind. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the lessons Europe has learned since the war broke out in Ukraine? It, it has been a hard lesson for many Europeans. First of all, it was a, a transformation of the relationship to Russia, which uh, um, collapsed from a, a partnership relationship to something quite different. Uh, uh, and uh, the fear of a conflict with Russia has now uh, sinked in with most European uh, uh, allies. The second thing is that uh, we were very ill-prepared for that type of large uh, attrition war. Uh, we didn't have the proper stocks, we didn't have the pro proper production capacity, which uh, led Europeans to really have a sort of a very serious wake-up call on their ability to simply have a proper military for themselves, uh, let alone supporting Ukraine in the long haul and on their own. Yeah. And, well, there has been a reckoning as well internally in many countries, right? Many countries investing more in their military and their defense capabilities. But there are still many countries that rely on different weapon systems, even in the European Union, you know, systems that require different ammunition. That means they can't be deployed together effectively. Why do you think the EU is not able to develop a coordinated defense policy? Well, uh, a large part of the, the defense policy is the responsibility of NATO. And uh, in that framework, we do have um, a proper norms and, uh, and standards that guarantee interoperability amongst NATO allies. But we haven't worked hard enough to ensure that th this would work in across the board. And we have to segue from interoperability to interchangeability of weapon systems to guarantee that allies are capable of working together and that every single weapon system is uh, available uh, for all allies. Mm. The second thing is uh, uh, within the EU, uh, there is, there's been remarkable progress since, the, since February 22. We've seen the EU training Ukrainian soldiers, uh, using the European peace facility to support the Ukrainians and also bringing together many uh, uh, new tools in the EU toolbox to support Ukraine. But we are not quite there yet. Uh, hence the importance of seeing the Europeans put their act together on defense and probably invest much more in defense, not only nationally, but also as a European Union. Yeah, we saw an example of what seemed like, you know, European military cooperation getting their act together, as you put it. France and Germany signed an agreement on the production of what they call the battle tank of the future. How important is this project for European defense in reality? It's one of the flagship projects for Franco-German defense cooperation and more broadly for Europe. Um, the next generation of battle tank, the fact that two big European nations decided to uh, uh, proceed together and that uh, Minister Pistorius and Minister Le Cornu uh, join forces in, in that project is, I think, a very good signal. Of course, it's a bit of a long-term project, uh, and uh, it's not going to deliver tanks um, in the next years, but it is a very strong signal that uh, the two largest um, defense budget in the European Union and the two largest countries are, are joining forces to develop jointly the next generation of, of battle tanks. 
Let's get more on this from DW political correspondent Simon Young. Simon, what has the NATO chief been saying here in Berlin? Well, Biresh, uh, he uh, gave a, uh, a brief uh, statement to reporters at uh, the Chancellery uh, in which he pretty much just confined himself to thanking Germany for uh, what it has been doing to support Ukraine uh, in this war. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was also pointing out that uh, uh, spying and espionage efforts by uh, uh, international countries like uh, Russia and China are a very worrying thing. But last night, uh, Stoltenberg was also in Berlin making uh, a speech. He was a bit more expansive. And what he had to say there was uh, the, uh, that Ukraine can still win its war against uh, Russia. Uh, and, you know, he said, of course, following the decision by the US Congress to keep up uh, military support, but also other countries like Germany, uh, the Netherlands and the UK uh, and others. Uh, but at the same time, he's keeping the pressure on, saying uh, now it's a question of really delivering the weapons uh, and ammunition uh, that Ukraine needs, given that Moscow, for its part, is also getting support from its international supporters, above all, of course, China. Speaking of support uh, for uh, Ukraine, and you did mention this, the US has approved this long-delayed aid package for Ukraine. This is in addition to sending the Atakim's long-range missiles to Kyiv, while the German chancellor continues to refuse to send the long-range Taurus missiles that Ukraine wants. Did this issue come up at all? Well, uh, it's hard to know, but that, that it would seem highly likely that that would be discussed. Certainly, uh, you know, various international partners, including the US and the UK, are keen for Germany to send its long-range missile. Uh, the Taurus missile has a range of 500 kilometres. That's longer than the US uh, missile. So it is a weapon that Kiev wants. Uh, and uh, senior defence officials from Washington are quoted as saying they hope that the decision to uh, supply that, uh, that US missile will encourage uh, pol political leaders in Germany uh, to send the Taurus as well. But, you know, what's being said behind closed doors, hard to say right now. Speaking of uh, sophisticated weapon systems, the German and French defence ministers have met in Paris and signed a deal to jointly produce what's been called the battle tank of the future. Do we know more about this project? Yeah, this is a, a very important project, the MGCS. It stands for Main Ground Combat System, uh, and it's a state-of-the-art tank uh, that is intended to replace the tank stocks uh, of uh, both Germany and France. Uh, it's been in the pipeline since 2017. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a complex project that is going to take a long time. More than a tank, really, a sort of networked system. Uh, you can you coordinate the operation of multiple vehicles. Uh, it also includes... Uh, things like artificial intelligence. Uh, so, you know, it should change the uh, picture on, on the battlefields of the future, they say. Problem is, it'll take a, a quite a bit longer. It's not due to be in operation until 2040. We'll leave it there for the time being. DW Simon Young, thanks so much for that.